Hurricane Fran is making landfall, a Category 3 hurricane. Stay with the Weather Channel for up-to-the-minute reports. Coming up on a special edition of WeatherScope, the latest on Hurricane Fran, right after your local forecast. This is a special edition of WeatherScope, comprehensive coverage of Hurricane Fran from the Weather Channel. Hurricane Fran has made landfall in North Carolina. We have continuing coverage, a very dangerous hurricane continuing to pound the beaches not far from Wilmington with winds of over 100 miles an hour. In gusts, we've had reported of 120 miles an hour. Thanks for watching the Weather Channel. I'm Mike Seidel in the Forecast Center, and there's the latest on Fran as of 9. We have the latest in as of 10, and that puts the center of Fran, the eye of Fran, just to the west of Wilmington, North Carolina. Winds of 105 miles an hour. It's moving now north at 16. The pressure is 956 millibars. Now, we were talking to Jim Cantoy earlier. He was uh, really in the thick of things with Fran, with high winds, and a lot of problems with the flooding, even in and around the satellite truck. And now we've got Jim back up on the satellite. Jim, good to see you. Uh, what has happened uh, since we last saw you about an hour ago? Well, it's definitely good to be back, too, Mike. Uh, we've seen the winds decrease a little bit. It appears the worst of the winds is over. But we are still in the eye wall, and winds are gusting uh, occasionally to hurricane force. As a matter of fact, you still may lose the signal occasionally. But since we talked to you last, we continue to see the overwash waters arise around the hotel, and they've been very high. I want to show you what else has happened, too. This is shot just a few minutes ago here, and we fed it back to you. This is unedited video of some sailboats that were ripped from their moorings. I mean, these aren't just small craft. We're talking 16, 20, perhaps 25-footers that per, perhaps were about three, 400 yards away uh, when they started next to the dock a little bit while, uh, a little while ago before these hurricane force winds moved in. And they've been torn from their moorings and uh, now have been pushed very, very close to the road here, which is ahead of our hotel. Now, the rains have let up considerably here. We're still in the eye wall, but we're still getting some pretty gusty winds. But instead of having the wind at my back and blowing me around all over the place, the force of the winds is now kind of behind the hotel. So I'm pretty much high and dry. But as we come out of this video, uh, you can see one of the boats maybe a little fuzzy behind you. We're giving you live footage of that boat. Uh, this is the 25-footer back there. It's probably about maybe 25 feet from the road. A lot of the water seems to have started to come down a little bit. And if you see that big pole dangling there, that is the light post. Uh, or what's left of it, I should say. Compliments of uh, Hurricane Fran. Mike, just to kind of wrap here, this has been a tremendous experience uh, for the last several hours to watch this thing really increase. But if I were to just kind of give it a consensus as what's going to, ha what's has happened 
This is probably one of the worst tidal flooding storms in eastern North Carolina in quite some time, and I think that we're going to find that out tomorrow. And Jim, we want to remind folks that uh, what they're seeing there is not the uh, Atlantic, but the intercoastal waterway. So you're uh, right. a few miles inland. So that makes it even more impressive, the fact that that's the intercoastal waterway. And that water we saw in the video is lapping right up to the buildings. Yeah, and I'll tell you, it, I mean, it's, it's amazing how fast the water can rise. I mean, we, were, we walked over to the marina when we first got here. We walked up toward the causeway. We walked down the streets. An hour later, we're almost surrounded by water. I mean, that's just how fast it rose. Okay, and what about the situation with those boats? Now, I mentioned earlier, those boats were moored, and then the wind uh, whipped them off their moorings, or uh, were they uh, just blown around near their dockings? No, I think, I think they were totally torn from their moorings, and the prevailing east wind uh, definitely took them this way, which is toward us. Because if you remember when I was broadcasting here, we had all the rain and wind coming this way at me. So that's exactly the way that they blew the boats as well. Now the wind has shifted a little bit more out of the southeast, and everything's going that way. And I'm kind of wondering uh, where those boats may be perhaps an hour from now. But the good news is some of the water is starting to come down a little bit and maybe we've seen uh, some of the worst of this overwash. Well, let's hope so, Jim, not only for yeah. you, but for all the uh, property owners and homeowners around the Wrightsville Beach area. That's Jim Cantori reporting live. Jim, uh, hang tight there. We'll be checking back with you throughout this evening uh, from Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Now, let's give you the latest as far as the satellite imagery is concerned. This is uh, the view. And remember, the bright colors indicating those higher or colder cloud tops. And if you look closely, you can see that little white dot making landfall about an hour and a half ago in eastern North Carolina. Now, the clouds extending all the way back now towards the Appalachians, and that is going to be the other story. We're talking about a lot of tropical moisture, and it's going to get wrung out, and the mountains add what we call an orographic lift. As that air comes up towards the mountains, it goes up, and as air rises, we get cooling, condensation, and even more rainfall. So even though the story right now is certainly uh, the beaches of the Carolinas, and especially southeastern North Carolina and Hanover, New Hanover and Brunswick County. Uh, the problem down the road is going to be up here. For instance, those of you watching around Roanoke, anywhere along the Skyline Drive, the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia, into the mountain state of West Virginia, and then into New England. Those of you tonight watching in New York, Boston, Washington, Philadelphia, are going to take part in this storm between now and the weekend. The rain, not the wind, but the rain. And if you're in a flood-prone area, uh, be advised and stay with us here at the Weather Channel. We'll certainly keep you updated as that situation develops. Back, though, to the uh, certainly the uh, clear and present danger here is Hurricane Fran, and you can probably, if you look closely, uh, find the eye of the hurricane right about here, and uh, that's where Joe Brown has been sitting over in Bolivia. Now, that is a town south, southwest of Wilmington on Highway 17, but also notice the northern eye walls where we've seen the heavier rains all evening long. These bright colors indicating rainfall rates of one to two inches an hour. That's what you've seen in Wilmington, and just got the latest eye from Wilmington at the airport. You've had a gust to 71 miles an hour from the southeast, so with that wind coming in from the southeast, that would indicate that the eye is likely going to pass just off to your west, and that is certainly the location as of 10 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. But look at all the rain now, and let me give you an idea of the uh, state line. If you can see it, the state line right here, South Carolina, North Carolina, there's the coast. This is Cape Fear, basically where it came in around Southport. And so far, uh, the rains have really been tremendous in these areas. We'll show you, or we'll try to show you later, a Doppler radar estimate. But back in the interior, as you get up towards the Triad area, up around Chapel Hill, and the Raleigh-Durham area, heavy rainfalls. In fact, Raleigh, so far at RDU at the Raleigh-Durham airport, 1.32 inches of rain, and a whole lot more to come easily. You could see five or more inches of rain tonight as Fran continues to spin on shore with its rain and associated risk of tornadoes. We've had a bit of a change now in the warnings. The warnings have been dropped south of Cape Romaine down to Edisto as of 9 Eastern, but the uh, warnings continue up from North Carolina-Virginia border south to Cape Romaine. That includes the Outer Banks and the Sounds. And right now with that wind coming in from the southeast across the Pamlico and Albemarle Sounds, no doubt we're going to have some flooding on the western side of the Sounds, and that is uh, once again another story, the coastal flooding, the storm surge. Hurricane force winds covering all the beaches, Wrightsville Beach, all the way up towards uh, the Moorhead City area. You're getting hurricane force wind gusts, and we'll be watching those winds slowly subside as the evening goes on as Fran is cut off from its energy source, the warm Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf Stream waters, and don't forget the friction. 
the friction of the land, the trees, the buildings kind of tear apart at the storm. There's your wind gust, 85 miles an hour at Wilmington, North Carolina. And the storm surge uh, continuing to be a big problem. Even as we speak, we're still getting that onshore flow, and that is piling the water up. Remember, the winds are coming this way. The storm is moving this way, so it's, it's A plus B, and uh, that is giving uh, the uh, kind of the double whammy effect in this area, whereas over around Myrtle Beach, where Jeff Morrow is, the winds are blowing offshore. And for those of you watching from the Myrtle Beach area or anywhere in South Carolina and you have property or beachfront property, especially east of Highway 17 or Highway 17 bypass, uh, the good news is tonight the wind is blowing offshore and there has been very little, uh, based on what Jeff is telling us, very little problems with tidal flooding. Jill Brown has really had the, uh, the big spot tonight. She's been in the eye of Hurricane Fran. Earlier, the winds were roaring at Jill's doors there at the uh, firehouse there in Bolivia, North Carolina. But now, Jill, tell us, has the uh, opposing side of the eye wall returned? And it hasn't quite yet. We have moved to the opposite side of the building to a safer location. So we're on the north side of the building anticipating those strong south uh, winds coming in. And we're just beginning to feel them a little bit. I can notice that the temperature is dropping a little bit. We're just beginning to feel those winds coming in, a little bit more rain. And they're telling me that on the opposite side of the building, you can actually hear the winds a lot more than you can right over here. So we're still in the eye. We're kind of holding steady for the time being. We've been in the eye for more than an hour now. So I'm kind of surprised we must have cut it right down the middle. But uh, again, things are kind of quiet. So as we wait for the eye wall to come back in, which shouldn't take too much longer, uh, I want to talk to Sheriff uh, Ronald Hewitt of Brunswick County. And he's been standing by, been watching things through the evening. Can you tell me what kind of things you've heard from around the county tonight? Well, it's been quite a busy day today, Jill. We started out early with evacuations. We have about 1,700 people in uh, shelters throughout Brunswick County right now. Our early assessment that we have got seems very optimistic. So at this time, we are uh, feeling very blessed. It's certainly not over. And uh, we're in a holding pattern, and we're going to be assessing damage later into the evening and early into the morning hours. So what is the plan for the rest of the night? Just kind of hold steady and wait to see what happens as we get the other side of the eye wall? In Brunswick County, North Carolina, we are in a holding pattern, and we will hold steady and get out there and see what kind of damage we do have, make sure that the citizens are safe. At this time, we have no reports of injury or loss of life, so we feel very blessed in southeastern North Carolina tonight. All right, Sheriff Hewitt, thank you very much for joining us, thank and hopefully you. as we get to the other side, we'll be doing just as well. We'll be checking back with you again later, see how things are going. Thank you. Okay, well, John and Mike got things nice and quiet. They haven't done too badly here in Brunswick County. The winds, of course, were blowing over 100 miles per hour, a lot of reports of tree damage, some high water here and there, but as the sheriff reported, no reports really of injuries. Uh, no reports of any fatalities. Uh, they may really luck out here in spite of the fact that they see the eye wall coming right over. Okay, Jill Brown, that's uh, good news uh, hearing there from the officials there in Brunswick County, uh, North Carolina, that so far no injuries, no fatalities, everybody uh, heeding those warnings, obviously, in that area. Jill, we'll be checking back with you in the bottom of the hour. By that point, you'll probably uh, be feeling the uh, effects of the other side of the eye of Hurricane Fran. Well, they are saying now, do you think this was just a rumor? It's been, we've been in the eye for so long, it seems like it's not coming back. But, of course, we know that it will, so we'll be kind of holding tight and waiting for that. No, based on radar, Jill, another few minutes, and you'll uh, be getting back into the heavy rainfall. Jill, thanks for the update from Bolivia, North Carolina. Jill Brown, as we continue our live coverage on Hurricane Fran, we will uh, stay with it throughout the uh, night here at the Weather Channel from Atlanta. We've got uh, Jill Brown there in uh, Bolivia, up the beach at Wrightsville Beach. We have uh, Jim Cantori and Jeff Morrow from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Big story tonight here on the Weather Channel. The other story will be the heavy rainfalls. We've touched base on that, but that is really going to be a serious problem. We can't uh, certainly underestimate the tropical rains. If you remember Agnes back in 72, uh, maybe not that serious, certainly, but we want to point in that direction of some flooding all the way from the southern Appalachians to New England. We're going to take a break, check your local forecast, then we'll come back and update you on your weekend weather coast to coast, so stay with us. Stay with the Weather Channel for comprehensive round-the-clock coverage of Hurricane Fran. The Weather Channel, depend on us to keep you ahead of the storm.
Ramada is a nice place. Holiday Inn is a nice place. But when you stay four nights at Ramada, you can order one of over 100 Republic Picture videos absolutely free. Here, you'll get four nights older. So, you can go home with a great personality or no personality. And maybe that's why last year, 23 million people chose Ramada over Holiday Inn. All things being equal, we're better. So call 1-800-2-RAMADA. Under Clinton, stagnant wages, the largest tax increase in history, two incomes needed to make ends meet. Americans deserve better. Make no mistake about it. My economic program is the right policy for Americans. The Dole Plan. Cut wasteful spending. Balance the budget. A tax cut of $1,600 for the typical family. You shouldn't have to apologize for wanting to keep what you earn. It's your money. Bob Dole. The better man for a better America. Natural sport. The walking shoe designed for rock climbers everywhere. Natural sport walking shoes are available at a fine retailer near you. A lot of folks need peace of mind these days, and that's just what they get with Napa Auto Care's peace of mind warranty. Repairs are guaranteed on both parts and labor for six months or 6,000 miles anywhere they travel. And when they use the Napa card, their guarantee doubles to 12 months or 12,000 miles. How do I know our customers find peace of mind here? Because I own this shop, and their peace of mind is guaranteed. We keep America Napa Auto Care Centers. Napa, we keep America running. I don't know what the story is. The garage is made for the car. Why do dogs and all the junk from the house live in the garage? Why is that? Everybody, everybody on the whole street's like that. There's nothing in there that anybody's used in at least five years. And what's even worse is I don't even get the high-octane fuel that I'm designed for. Like Chevron Supreme with Tecron. You're just like, you're nothing. No premium outperforms Chevron Supreme with Tecron. Chevron, simply smarter. It's a pathetic existence, you know. To reduce knocking and pinging, try new Chevron Supreme with Tecron. Chevron, simply smarter. You've spent your entire life sleeping in an old-fashioned flat bed. But now you have the opportunity to find out about a better, healthier way to relax and sleep. Get this free information kit about Craftmatic adjustable beds. Call toll-free and a helpful operator will mail you a free Craftmatic adjustable bed catalog and this special rebate certificate. It's worth $200 off any Craftmatic Model 1 adjustable bed. Why is Craftmatic making this rebate offer? It's our way of saying thanks for taking the time to find out about Craftmatic. There is, of course, absolutely no obligation for calling toll-free and requesting this helpful information kit. So if you have any interest in adjustable beds, pick up your phone and call now. Call toll-free 1-800-901-9393. That's 1-800-901-9393 toll-free. 1-800-901-9393. Don't fool around with Mother Nature. When it comes to severe weather, be prepared. Call 1-900-WEATHER. No place on Earth has better weather. The news came out that morning. I must have tried my broker three times. Hi, your call is important to me. Now Please the clock's ticking, the market's open, and the stock I wanted is on fire. Maybe somebody made some money, but it wasn't me. At Schwab, you can get the team of experts you need whenever you need them and still save on commissions. Call 1-800-540-0091. I come across this German software firm, but I'm shooting blind. I've got a stale quote, no research, and my broker's dark for another 10 hours. Sure, they'll get me stuff in the morning. Exactly 43 minutes before Frankfurt closes. Schwab is open all night for quotes, research, and news. Is your broker? Call 1-800-540-0091. Why do I feel like I'm two steps behind the game? Please leave your name and number. Maybe somebody made some money, but it wasn't me. Don't wait to get the edge you need. Call Schwab now for our free guide to global investing and get trading the way it should be. Stay with the Weather Channel for comprehensive round-the-clock coverage of Hurricane Fran. The Weather Channel. Depend on us to keep you ahead of the storm.
The Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. This five-day business planner is sponsored by Kelly Services, the first name in staffing for 50 years. All right, well, the next five days are going to be pretty wet ones here, at least the first of the three. We have a lot of rain coming in, and you can see we have it mostly in North Carolina. Already, we've had three to eight inches of rainfall in some areas, and more is still falling. Flooding is already occurring, not only from the storm surge, we've got the flooding along the coast, but now inland areas will begin to flood because of the tremendous amounts of rain coming down in the Carolinas. As a matter of fact, there is a good chance that we could see over a foot of rain in some areas, especially up in the mountains, because the mountains are going to provide more lift to this already heavy rain situation. Well, there's what has fallen, three to eight inches of rain. That's why we have a flash flood watch out here from the eastern parts of South Carolina, all of North Carolina, right up into Virginia. The rain will be heavy the next 36 to 48 hours. And even after that, it's going to move up to the northeast. Locally, 10 inches or more could fall tonight through tomorrow. And a few areas out west could see some rainfall as well. But right in here, heavy rain spreading on up into Pennsylvania. Right along the spine of the Appalachians will be the heaviest rainfall. We're talking about a uh, really, really bad situation because this area is already saturated from recent rainfalls. And, of course, here's the big picture showing our Hurricane Fran moving on in. There's also a tropical depression we'll want to uh, watch that could become a tropical storm down near the islands. Let's check in on the forecast and talk about what's going to happen in the days to come. And the tropical storm and hurricane forecast positions are provided to us by the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. And by morning hours, say by 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, we think we'll have a tropical storm. It should weaken pretty quickly as far as the winds go. Each and every hour, our hurricane is becoming weaker and weaker for two reasons. One, it's cut off from its energy supply, which is the warm waters of the Atlantic here. And two, it's running into a lot of friction here. Of course, over the water, it's like sitting on a piece of glass compared to over land where you have the mountains, the trees, and the buildings, unfortunately, which are taking the brunt of that wind. We have a front here in the central U.S., which will spawn a few showers and thunderstorms. Nothing major, I don't think, here. This will be major, even though it will be weakening. The winds will be dying down maybe 40 or 50 miles per hour with some of the gusts. We are going to see a tremendous amount of rainfall as it slows down a little bit here, kind of high pressure to the north, low pressure, pretty strong east wind here. But the rainfall, once again, 10 inches or more is possible. Well, cool weather in the west, actually kind of dry out here. In the east, it's going to be a warm weekend, but you've got to deal with Fran, and that is going to put a damper on some activities, I'm afraid. Where, Fr where Fran is... Uh, falling, you can say we are going to see the temperatures held down in the 60s and 70s possibly. And then on Saturday, not too bad, some 70s in the northeast, some 80s, 90s across the southeast, and the west is actually going to warm up here as well, big time on Sunday, with the 80s and 90s rebounding here in the northwest. The 90s across the deep south, we've got 70s and 80s in the northeast, not a bad weekend. Temperature-wise, on Monday, it looks pretty good. A little cooler air coming in behind a front. And then Tuesday, still some 70s through the Great Lakes and across the Northeast. Well, on Saturday, here's what happens with Fran. Fran comes into the Carolinas, starts turning the corner here, gets caught up in the mid-latitude winds, and we're going to see it pushing back up through New England. Guess what? More rainfall here. After you've already been soaked by one hurricane, we're going to see more coming in to southern New England. And that'll be mainly on Saturday and Sunday for the Northeast Corridor. This front over the east will kind of sag on down through Chicago, maybe uh, Wichita, St. Louis. Showers and thunderstorms are possible on Sunday. The east getting drenched here Saturday, Sunday, right up through New England, including New York City and even Philadelphia could be wet both Saturday and Sunday. Monday we go, we got showers and thunderstorms across the deep south and heavy rain still falling here as it's very slow to leave. We're gonna have a front in the area, the moisture still kind of trailing out. Hopefully this will change, but right now it looks like three days of potentially heavy rainfall in parts of the Northeast. And by Tuesday, getting pretty quiet out there across much of the Southern US. We're looking for showers and thunderstorms here and it doesn't look too bad at all. Well, stay tuned. We're gonna have more on your local weather coming up. We'll also be checking out more on the tropical situation. We actually have another tropical depression, which could become a tropical storm. We'll have more on that coming up, so stay tuned.
time hiring decisions, we'll find the best candidate and then let you evaluate them for up to 90 days on the job before you hire them. It's called Kelly Select, and it works. Call 1-800-YES-KELLY to find out more. Kelly Services, your staffing source. For more information about Kelly Services, call 1-800-YES-KELLY today. Back in 1869, when workers joined the last sections of the Intercontinental Railroad, Ames tools were in their hands. No wonder. Since 1774, Ames has had a reputation for making a shovel you could depend on. Now, more than a century later, American-made Ames lawn and garden tools like rakes, hoes, and shovels are still tough to beat for dependability and value. In fact, we guarantee you'll be satisfied with any Ames product. To us, the men who met at Promontory Summit built more than a railroad. They built our reputation. Visit your local retailer for Ames Lawn and Garden Tools, quality tools for every season. Someday, when the car is paid off and my bills are caught up, I'm going to sponsor one of those kids you see on TV. Someday when I get a big promotion. Someday when the kids are out of college. Someday. It's a wonderful thought. But for the 35,000 kids who died yesterday from hunger and disease, for the mothers crying out in vain, someday didn't come soon enough. This is Dorian. Every day, children like her drink filthy water. They play in open sewers. They eat food you wouldn't touch. And they die from simple childhood diseases like measles. These are innocent children. They deserve better. They deserve decent food, clean water, medical care, and an education. Please call Christian Children's Fund and let us send you the photo and story of one child whose life you can change for just 70 cents a day. There's a child out there who needs you now. Please, let someday be today. Coming up on a special edition of Weatherscope, the latest on Hurricane Fran, right after your local forecast. This is a special edition of Weatherscope, comprehensive coverage of Hurricane Fran from the Weather Channel. Hurricane Fran batters the beaches of North Carolina. We have continuing coverage. It's a Category 3, a major hurricane, the first one to take a direct hit at Wilmington since Hazel in 1954. And already we're getting reports now of a serious situation, even worse than Hazel. Just in from the Weather Service in Wilmington, we're getting a report now of 10 feet of water on Pine Grove Road in Wilmington. Bradley C Creek water levels were higher than what was observed during Hazel over 40 years ago. So a very serious uh, weather situation continuing now in southeastern North Carolina. Let's show you the latest from the Hurricane Center as of uh, 9 uh, Eastern time. Let's give you the uh, coordinates. Uh, correct me, uh, we just got the latest in as of 10. And that puts the center of 
Fran, the eye just west of Wilmington, North Carolina. If you're plotting at home, 34.2 north and 78.1 west. The sustained winds have dropped off a notch from 115 to 110 miles an hour, and Fran is now moving north at 16. The pressure holding steady at 956. We'll likely see that pressure start to rise. And obviously, as Fran loses its connection with its warm energy source, the warm water, it's going to start easing up wind-wise and start weakening, but still a lot of moisture. And you can see the bright colors here on our satellite loop extending all the way back down to the mountains of West Virginia and Virginia. So heavy, heavy rainfalls will continue to be the big problem. And you can see the eye coming on shore about uh, between 8.30 and 9 o'clock Eastern time. Now, as I mentioned, just west of Wilmington, North Carolina. And this moisture is heading into all of New England. That is going to be the other story here uh, as we go into this coming weekend. Closer inspection, the eye now on shore. And that is where the Weather Channel's Jill Brown has been this evening. She's been in Bolivia, North Carolina. Now, about 9 o'clock Eastern, Jill reported that she had uh, uh, actually seen the eye wall go by, felt the wind subside, and now, Jill, what's the situation there? Mike, I can't believe it, but if we're still really in the eye, it's been about an hour and a half. Things are picking up, but only a little bit. I think you can see behind me, you ever played uh, Kadima in the eye of a hurricane? That's what they're doing now. That, la that game may not last long as the winds may be picking up a little bit. It's certainly happening slowly. We'll notice that the temperature has dropped a little bit. Uh, the rain was picking up for a while there. Now it's just kind of drizzle. And I can kind of see in the trees in, a di in the distance from time to time they start blowing. But uh, it's not happening quickly, that's for sure. Jill, have you seen any breaks in the overcast there in Bolivia? Well, no, not really. We kept checking up. Didn't really see uh, any of the stars at all throughout the eye. We can see the top of the tower with the lights on it. Uh, that's about a, as high as we can see at this point. Now, how about the winds now? We talked to you about, oh gosh, about 20 minutes ago, and you said that you were beginning to hear what you thought was the uh, return, the winds coming in from the south and southeast. But now, do you hear that roar in the background in the distance? Well, when you go to the other side of the building, you can hear it. We're blocked real nicely here. You go around the side and the winds are blowing a little bit stronger. We're on the north side for safety's sake. Uh, winds will be blowing from the south. So anything that would be blowing would be coming against the other side of the building and uh, we're in good shape right here. But as it starts to pick up a little bit more, we'll be able to see it more in the background. Uh, we'll be able to see the rain and the winds. But again, so far, uh, so good. Uh, there's still uh, that question, is this just a rumor? I guess uh, people said it's not a rumor about the hurricane. It's definitely a hurricane. You go to the other side of the building and you can tell that it's beginning to come back in. Well, it's pretty amazing the fact that the eye wall has been measured by the hurricane hunters at about 20 miles and it's moving north at 16 and you've been in the eye wall now a good 90 minutes. So uh, if you do the mathematics, it certainly is uh, unbelievable that you're still in the calm of Hurricane Fran. Yeah, it really is amazing. And Mike, uh, we're here in Bolivia in Brunswick County at the Brunswick County Emergency Management Facility. I want to point that out because earlier I had mistakenly called it the, the firehouse, but we are at uh, <laughs> uh, the emergency management facility and there are a lot of people here. These are all people who are working. We have 911 operators. As a matter of fact, one just came out a little bit earlier and told me that they had a report of a apartment complex in Southport. The woman actually called the the roof had collapsed on her apartment. Apparently she's okay. They sent folks out to help her out. But uh, other than that, they've really had mainly reports of trees down and some high water. Uh, Coast Guard on duty here, National Guard, Health Department, uh, full of a lot of people, you know, standing by ready to take the calls and ready to go into action. Uh, basically, especially uh, once Fran calms down a little bit and moves on out, then they'll be hitting the road and assessing the damage. And just want to pass along that Southport is right on the coast uh, and not where you are. You're inland uh, on Highway 17 southwest of Wilmington. So that report of that uh, collapsed roof in Southport is uh, certainly uh, obviously a byproduct of those winds uh, coming on shore there at Southport along the coast in uh, Brunswick County. Right. We're about 18 miles inland and probably haven't seen nearly what they saw along the coast but uh, still very strong winds. Uh, for a while, I've heard reports of sustained 105 miles per hour. We don't have a reporting station here. We'll have to go by what we heard at Wilmington. And any other reports of damage? You're, you know, you're there at the EMS headquarters there in Brunswick County and uh, Bolivia. Any other reports that you can pass along to us as far as the coastal areas? Um, other than that, we heard on Thompson Beach, unconfirmed reports still to this time of severe damage to the uh, police department and the firehouse there. And actually right here, we're going to get some video to show you. It's too far away for me to walk to it, but there's a truck out here with one of those big uh, plastic tool chests in the back of it with a limb about this big around pierced through it. 
So that gives you an idea. The fact that we haven't seen a whole lot of damage right through here is a little deceiving. Uh, they were saying that a lot of the, the trees went down in Bertha, so that may have weeded out some of the weaker trees. But there is some damage. There's also a lot of uh, larger trees uh, away from this immediate vicinity that have come down. And I think once the sun rises, tomorrow we're really going to see a lot more damage. And of course, it'll probably be worse right down by the coastline. It uh, certainly will be, and at first light we'll have a better idea, certainly uh, along those beaches, those barrier islands, uh, Riceville Beach and down towards uh, the Southport area. Jill, thanks uh, for giving us the update. Still in the eye wall, that's Jill Brown from Bolivia, North Carolina. Amazing. She has been in the eye wall now for 90 minutes. And that is an area in Brunswick County, as she mentioned, 17 miles from the coast, but the coast getting uh, obviously the worst of Fran. The eye of Hurricane Fran now just to the west of Wilmington, moving north at 16 miles an hour. And we just got a report of a wind gust to 94 miles an hour in Jacksonville, North Carolina. If you're not familiar with that, Jacksonville is off to the north east of Wellington and on shore maybe uh, some 20 miles from the coast and that uh, is certainly an area you may know from Camp Lejeune and the Marine Corps base there. Here's the uh, spin and, and here's your radar, your Doppler radar and the eye of the hurricane now on shore but notice the rain bands. By the way, let's give you an idea. Jacksonville is up in this area where they had the 94 an hour wind gust. Obviously, one of these bands here associated with the outer eye wall. Uh, that's where you have what we term squally weather, heavy rains, drenching downpours, and you also get very high wind gusts as these squalls move on by. We're also getting a word now that some serious problems are occurring over here in the sound areas. That's easy to figure out because the winds are coming around Fran like this blowing counterclockwise. The water now is piling up in the uh, Pamlico Sound area. We've got a problem now in the Noose and Pamlico Rivers. Flooding has already been reported along the Trent River in New Bern, as well as along several waterways in Beaufort County. The Trent River Bridge is inaccessible from the New Bern side. Water levels in Washington are also within a foot of overflowing the waterfront, and the Queens Creek Bridge near Swainsboro, or rather Swansboro, is also underwater. So we have a big problem tonight. Jill Brown is right about here in Bolivia, just off to the south and west of the Wilmington area. Now this rain is moving up. We've had wind gusts of 41 miles an hour in the Raleigh-Durham area. Heavy, heavy rainfall is continuing to be a problem, and that is, again, is going to be a real um, problem this weekend. We've discussed in the past Hurricane Agnes making landfall on the Gulf Coast, but then some of the hardest hit areas, the mountains of West Virginia, uh, the Wyoming Valley in Pennsylvania back in June of 1972. And although we're not looking at an Agnes situation, that just gives you kind of an illustration of what can happen when we have all this tropical moisture and we have the wind blowing onshore. And what is going on is we have the Appalachian Mountains right on through here, the crest line. These winds blow onshore and the air comes up to the crest line and rises and rising air as we know cools condensation we get clouds and that really adds more to the old rainfall total so your rain gauge will pick up additional rain so we're very concerned about this whole area especially the skyline drive the interstate 81 area down towards the blue ridge parkway around the boone area then getting up into oh gosh uh, the laurel mountains of pennsylvania over towards the poconos and eventually into new england uh, that will be the uh, story over the weekend right now we do have hurricane warnings as you can see they've been dropped though south of Cape Romaine but they continue up for the entire coast of North Carolina and that also includes uh, the Myrtle Beach area in Georgetown or rather the Myrtle Beach area rather in South Carolina. Now Jim Cantori has really uh, felt the real effects of Hurricane Fran. We've been following the storm from his vantage point. He's at Wrightsville Beach in North Carolina. Earlier we lost our video transmission. Jim tells us the truck was uh, getting lapped by water. Now Jim the weather is improving dramatically or not so dramatically? Not so dramatically, Mike. We are still in the eye wall, unlike Jill, who's been dealing with the eye, the calm of the storm. We are in the eye wall, which quickly becomes the most ferocious part of the storm. We're definitely riding up through that eastern eye wall now. It doesn't appear that we're going to get into the center of the storm or the calm of the storm. It will be uh, off to our west. But winds are still well over hurricane force, uh, gusting at times perhaps to 85, 90 miles an hour. But they have shifted a little bit out of the southeast. But I want to take you back earlier to when we were dealing with that extreme northern part of the eye wall, which is just coming on shore. We had a tremendous overwash here right around the hotel. As a matter of fact, it was probably about 270 degrees of the hotel. It was surrounded by water. We thought that we'd have to uh, you know, do something to the truck because we thought we were going to see the water come all the way up to the truck. But you're looking at some of the boats that were blown in uh, from their moorings that were probably three, 400 yards offshore. I saw these as we got here earlier today. 
they were well offshore. There were uh, there was a marina to our right here that was had boats uh, sitting there on their moorings in the deck. There's some of that decking now that's sitting in the middle of the road, and I can't uh, help but to imagine that there's just an absolute mess out there. There's also, Mike, a great deal of pine smell in the air, which leads me to believe that there's been a lot of tree limbs that have been snapped or torn off, and uh, there's just a ton of debris all over the place. It's still not safe to wander around out here. We have uh, winds still gusting, as I mentioned, at hurricane force or even greater, and uh, there's a lot of loose shrapnel and uh, all the stuff that shingles and whatnot on the roof that are still blowing off at this time. And Jim, uh, remind your, our viewers at home that you're not on the barrier island, you're back on the coast. And uh, right now, by the way, Jim, we're showing uh, the folks at home, this is unedited video, by the way, of uh, some of what you saw earlier as far as the uh, high water near where you're uh, broadcasting from. Are you, are you looking at the high water? Yeah, the we're boats? looking at the video right now. If you want to describe uh, yeah, this, a little yeah, bit this of what is you the shot. Boat, this, is, this is the boats that we were talking about. I mean, these, these are 16, 25-foot boats here that have been ripped from their moorings and brought very, very close to this hotel. Uh, the water was high enough, so let's say if the surge continued and then the winds continued, they may have made their way all the way over to this hotel. But ever since then, the water has receded a little bit and uh, things have improved here from, from a washover standpoint, but the winds continue to howl at hurricane force. And like you mentioned, Mike, we are in a safe location now. We're about a mile inland. Uh, I can't imagine what it's like at Wrightsville Beach. We showed you the Johnny Mercer Pier there, at least what was left of it before we left. I would think that that is probably gone right now. We're pretty close to it. Jim, we just saw a picture of one of those sailboats, and it looked like it had been cracked almost in half there as it was uh, kind of lodged up against the uh, uh, land area there in the intercoastal. So obviously somebody is going to have uh, some property damage, no doubt here. Much the same scenes we saw over the weekend in Nantucket where boats were blown from their moorings right onto the coast. Unfortunately, too, it looks like the three that we're showing you were blown right into a stack of pine trees uh, just off to the bay before you get to the road. Mike, I really think here in the southeastern North Carolina, this is going to be one of the worst tidal flooding situations that they've dealt with in a very long time when we wake up tomorrow morning and the sun does rise. And Jim, we've already uh, mentioned on the air just a few minutes ago that there has been a report already of some serious tidal flooding up in the uh, Pamlico Sound area with that onshore wind blowing the water up into the inland tributaries. And that'll be another scene of flooding, even though it's not even right there near the coast. Yeah, that's the problem with these sounds, too. You can get water with a strong east-northeast wind to blow back up the sounds. And you got to remember, too, Mike, in the last couple of days, we've had anywhere from 15 to even 20 inches of rain in some of these spots. So those tributaries are still trying to get runoff. And when high tide came in today, that's when we really started to see Fran crank and all that water really rushed back in there. And I don't even think the tide ever came out all that much. Okay, Jim Cantori, thanks for joining us live uh, from Wrightsville Beach. Uh, still in the thick of things, as he mentioned, although he's protected, they're still getting hurricane force wind gusts at Wrightsville Beach, and we will be certainly checking back in with him. And we may try to go back to Jill Brown. She has been the, in the eye of Hurricane Fran for almost two hours now. Is that uh, going to be possible? Not quite ready. We're going to get back to Jill in a minute. First, we want to show you the storm surge. This has been updated to reflect the latest information. And again, it's always along and to the right of where the hurricane makes landfall. You've got the winds blowing in this direction, plus you have the movement of the storm. So you're adding one to the other. It's, it's A plus B, and that's why along and to the right of the center is where you can expect that storm surge, 8 to 12 feet. So we're not dealing with a surge like we had with uh, Hurricane Hugo back in 89. Of course, that was a Category 4 hurricane, but we're still dealing with a wall of water. Remember, a cubic yard of water weighs 1,700 pounds. So imagine a cubic yard of water, almost a ton, and just uh, imagine a 10 to 12 foot wall of water and tack onto that those huge waves crashing on shore. So you can imagine the tremendous force and generally in a hurricane, most of the destruction in a lot of hurricanes caused by the storm surge. Of course, the winds can be a problem too, but that water exerts an incredible pressure, and that's why beachfront property also gets uh, certainly uh, demolished. And again, we're talking about the Pamlico and Albemarle Sound areas, the winds blowing onshore, and you can kind of see these little lines in here, these darker lines. Those are the in inland tributaries, some of the rivers like the Pamlico River, uh, the Noose River, and also up toward the Chowan River, those rivers uh, coming in from the sounds, all prone to some serious uh, flooding 
we're talking about the western side as the water gets blown in by those uh, strong east to southeast winds. Now, as far as the other problem we're dealing with, once the uh, hurricane has made landfall, which it has, a tornado watch. And this now is up and has been extended into Virginia. So those of you watching around the Tidewater area, that is Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Hampton Roads, over towards Emporia on Highway 58. If you're uh, watching now from the Richmond area, and almost over towards the uh, Shenandoah Valley and almost as far north as Front Royal. This is the latest from the Storm Prediction Center until 11 o'clock Friday morning, 11 a.m. Friday morning. So we're talking about almost another 12 hours. This watch is in effect unless they uh, let it go early, but uh, this is always a concern. Uh, the good news about tornadoes with hurricanes, they tend to be very weak. Uh, F-0s or F-1s on the Fujita scale, that is a scale of intensity from zero to five. So uh, we're not talking about the the killer tornadoes we often see in the plains during the springtime, but still an F1 can spin up some damage and can cause some problems. So that tornado watch in effect, that includes those of you in the Raleigh-Durham area in all of eastern North Carolina. And it's usually uh, the case is it's along and in the northeast quadrant. This is the northeast quadrant, and that's why we have uh, the risk of the tornadoes. That is the favorite area for tornadoes spinning up from a hurricane. Jill Brown, do we have Jill Brown yet? We've got Jill Brown. There's Jill. Now, Jill has been reporting live from Olivia, North Carolina. She was in the eye of the storm about 9 o'clock Eastern. Jill, are you still in the eye of Hurricane Fran? Well, what do you think? <laughs> like you can see that now oh, the, the eye wall is coming back. back in. We're definitely hearing the hum. Winds are likely to get stronger. They're just beginning to really start coming back in. And if we didn't have the building here, it would be much stronger. But we're protected by the building, so we're in a safe location. Winds are coming up from the south now instead of from the north. So we're on the north side of the building. You can hear the hum. The trees are starting to bend a little bit. And uh, it's definitely the temperatures dropped. So that's one thing that was an indication that uh, we're getting out of the eye because in the center, of course, it's very very warm and humid, and it really got very warm and sticky. We're like, get these coats off. It was a big, big difference. Yeah, it often is the eye wall has the, in the eye of the storm, you get the warmest temperatures, and now, now that you're getting in back into the eye wall and the periphery of the storm, the temperatures are dropping off. What about the uh, winds? Now, you mentioned you're kind of blocked, but have you noticed uh, a real uh, swing in the trees in those areas where you can visualize the uh, increase in the wind speed? Just a little bit, just beginning to happen. The rain hasn't kicked back in quite yet like it was. The winds certainly aren't as strong as they were before, uh, but we are feeling it coming back in. So it was a long wait. Uh, a lot of folks here at the Brunswick County Emergency Management Facility have been kind of sitting by and waiting. Uh, a lot of them just really amazed, came out to walk around and see what it was like. Now they're all back in, uh, manning the phones, really, and kind of waiting to hear calls. But they've been pretty lucky here, and we've had uh, just mainly reports so some trees down, some high water, uh, no injuries as far as I know in Brunswick County and Southport, which may be in Brunswick County, Southport down close to the shore. I told you last time, report of a, a apartment complex with a roof collapsed and apparently they went and uh, brought the woman out of there and she's doing okay. Okay, Jill, thanks for the update. Well, when we come back to you at the top of the hour at 11 o'clock Eastern, we want to ask you a question about Aaron and the length you were in the eye of Aaron versus uh, tonight, Jill Brown in the eye of Hurricane Fran for about an hour and 45 minutes. Pretty amazing. We're going to continue our live coverage here on the Weather Channel. Stay with us. We're going to take a break now. Check your local weather. We'll be right back. Natural Sport, the walking shoe designed for the human race. Natural Sport walking shoes are available at a fine retailer near you. channel no place on earth has better weather well look at that we've got a tornado watch in effect for parts of virginia and north carolina also due to the onslaught of hurricane fran still packing 105 mile per hour winds mm. there's the radar there's the look at it of course you can't see me because i'm not punched up in the camera but maybe we there we go oh, I, yeah kind of a little bashful tonight Here's the heavy rain to the north of the eye, and you just saw Jill Brown. She is right here. So she's reemerging out of the eye, and the winds and the rain are going to get her too. Mm. Out to the north, heavy rain. Winds gusting to 94 miles per hour, Jacksonville Naval Air Station, and the storm surge into Onslow Bay tonight. Mm. 
is there going to be some damage to look at tomorrow once the sun rises. Wow. Some of the rainfall totals, Wilmington, North Carolina, four and a half inches of rain. And I'll tell you, we're not done yet. Look at here, we're moving it up into Raleigh-Durham, into Goldsboro, winds there almost 50 miles per hour. What a night it's going to be in Raleigh, uh, right up I-40, from Wilmington all the way up to Raleigh-Durham, then into Virginia, and the wind you feel tomorrow morning in Washington, D.C., courtesy of Hurricane Fran. By tomorrow morning, just a tropical storm. But flood watches are in effect for North Carolina, parts of South Carolina, almost all the state of Virginia into West Virginia and Western Maryland because we've had so much rain and so much more rain is yet to come. 10 inches of rain are possible. And there's your tornado watch. That is in effect until 11 a.m. tomorrow. That's good for another 12 hours and nine minutes. That is, that's not incorrect. Quite often when hurricanes move on shore, they spawn tornadoes, weak ones, but hey, a tornado, you don't mess around. And generally to the north and east of the track. In this case, we've got the track heading up. It's nor just northwest of Wilmington right now. Should head up right I-40, weakening as it heads toward Raleigh-Durham. And out to the east of that, weak tornadoes are possible. In addition to that gradient wind, the strong hurricane force winds. So we've got some action out here in the tropics. That is for sure. Hey, look what else is coming down the pike. Out here, east of the Caribbean Islands, is Tropical Depression number eight. See, we've got Fran in here. We had Gustav die out over the Atlantic. So eight would be the H storm, and that would be Tropical Storm Hortense. It's not a tropical storm yet, but it's close. 35 mile per hour winds, moving to the west at 13 miles per hour. These are the Leeward Islands. These are the Northeast Caribbean Islands, keeping a close eye on this one. The shower activity is weakened somewhat, but notice the circular formation of these high, thin, wispy clouds. That gives us an indication that at the upper levels of the atmosphere, it's favorable for tropical development. So we'll keep an eye on this. We're expecting another flare-up of showers tomorrow. That will get perilously close to Barbuda and then into the Virgin Islands perhaps on Saturday as a strong tropical storm at least. Well, there you have it, my friend. That's a look at the tropics from all different perspectives. One thing I want to go to now on high tides time here in the East Coast. Our hurricane is in, but the winds are still blowing, as I said, at Jacksonville Naval Air Station, 94 mile per hour wind gusts. And there are reports now of the Noose River and the Pamlico River backing up. Normally they flow from northwest to southeast into the sounds and then out into the Atlantic. The winds are so strong that the water in the sounds backing up, back into the rivers, and we're flooding in Newburgh, North Carolina because of that. That's going to continue tonight. And I'll tell you, high tide again is about three o'clock in the morning. So in addition to our hurricane coming in, the tide is coming in at the present time. So that's gonna be a problem, at least for the next several hours. And then since the hurricane will be weakening and moving away from the coast, after three o'clock too, the tide will be going out. Then we can breathe a slow sigh of relief. So we're getting water from all different directions here. From the sky, Wilmington, North Carolina, four and a half, and it's coming down again. Goldsboro, North Carolina, 1.68 inches. 1.41 inches at Raleigh, and in Asheville, North Carolina, 1.2. Now in Charleston, I'll tell you, you guys got off lucky this time. We were comparing Hurricane Fran to Hurricane Hugo of 1989. Fortunately, Fran headed up into North Carolina earlier tonight, making landfall at Cape Fear. Unfortunately for them, but fortunate for us in Charleston. It was windy and rainy, but it could have been, and it has been worse. Well, coming up next on the Weather Channel, we'll go live to North Carolina as Jill Brown encounters the winds on the south side of the eye wall. And we've got traveler's weather coming up next.
Why is the Home Depot so huge? You need all that stuff in there because there's so many ideas. Anything and everything that can go into, on, or around your house, we carry at the Home Depot. It's like a one-stop shop. We give people choices. You can build your whole house by coming to our store. Your whole house. The Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Illuminate your home with light bulbs from GE, a name you can trust. You'll find them at the guaranteed low price every day at the Home Depot. This tropical update was brought to you by the Home Depot. It's always fun to get to know baby animals. You never know what they're going to do. That's why your kids and you too will love watching Bonkers for Babies, exclusively from Time Life Kids. One of the greatest pleasures in life is watching a child do what it does best, frolic around. That's why your family will love Bonkers for Babies, specially priced at only $4.99. It's your first Zoolife video, and it's not available in stores. Every Zoolife video is packed with lots of animals and lots of fun. And if you order by credit card now, you'll get animal bloopers free. You're going to see some of the funniest, craziest moments of my travels from around the world. Oh, God. So go bonkers for babies. Call now. There's no doubt in my mind that animals feel love. To order, call 1-800-624-9955. Use your credit card and receive your animal bloopers video free or send to this address. 60 meteorologists, advanced weather technology. Stay ahead of the storm. Tropical updates, 50 minutes past every hour on the Weather Channel. Brought to you by the Home Depot. And now it's time for the Michelin Drivers Report. Brought to you by Michelin and your participating Michelin dealers. Flood watch is in effect for the mid-Atlantic states. Obviously, we'll have a complete rundown on Hurricane Fran coming up in just three and a half minutes. Elsewhere in the country, well, there's not too much wetness happening tonight. In Chicago and Detroit, Flint, Michigan, Boston, New York City, we're okay, but some of this moisture may eventually get into the northeast. Initially, it's going to head this way and then kind of curve around to the east coast just in time for the weekend. Ah! We'll get that forecast in a second. Showers and thunder showers going gangbusters tonight. South Dakota and Nebraska, where a severe thunderstorm watch remains in effect. But here in Virginia and North Carolina, it's a tornado watch that's in effect. And look how long the time period is on this one. They usually go, what, three or four hours? This one's going 12 hours because of Hurricane Fran. The complete story, next. <laughs> Michelin, we believe a tire that's just good in the rain isn't good enough. Introducing the Michelin X1 with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty. It's the one tire that gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus control in any driving condition. After all, it hasn't rained that much in years. The Michelin X1. Find Michelin tires at this dealer near you because so much is riding on your tires. Coming up on a special edition of WeatherScope, the latest on Hurricane Fran, right after your local forecast.
is a special edition of Weatherscope, comprehensive coverage of Hurricane Fran from the Weather Channel. Hurricane Fran has made landfall in North Carolina tonight. Damage now coming in, reports of damage and flooding all the way up into the sounds around the outer banks of North Carolina. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mike Seidel here in the Weather Channel Forecast Center, and let's give you the latest as of 10. We are certainly anxiously awaiting the latest from the Hurricane Center. The 11 o'clock Eastern Time update still not in, but as soon as we get the information, we will pass it along to you. As of 10, 34.2 north, 78.1 west. That is if you're applauding at home. That puts the center, the eye of Hurricane Fran, just to the west of Wilmington, North Carolina. So those of you in Wilmington have obviously experienced those very strong winds from the south and southeast. Sustained winds down from 105. Fran made landfall about 8.30 tonight around the Cape Fear area and in the Brunswick County area of North Carolina, packing winds of 115 miles an hour. The hurricane now moving north at 16, and the pressure is 956 millibars. Hurricane Fran moving over the Brunswick County area this evening, and in Bolivia, North Carolina, Jill Brown was in the eye of Hurricane Fran for about an hour and a half. Now, the, the worst has returned to that area. Jill, what's the latest? Well, Mike, uh, we're here at the Brunswick County Emergency Management Facility. We have been all evening. Uh, definitely the first side of this, the first eye wall, uh, was much stronger than what we've been encountering now. You can see that it's windy. It's definitely picked up. The rain really hasn't come back in just yet. Maybe that will happen with time. We've had a report of another crew from another TV station, actually, that came up from Myrtle Beach that said that they were surprised that it wasn't uh, any worse than it was. They felt like they got here okay. Not that we're telling people that they should hit the road, but maybe as this is coming ashore, what I wanted to ask you is, are we getting reports of lower winds? Does it seem that this is beginning to weaken someone at this point? Well, Hurricane Fran is weakening, Joe. I think what we've seen on the radar is that the southern eye wall, the uh, part that you're going through right now, is weaker than the eye wall that you experienced, the northern and northeastern, northwestern fringe you experienced uh, several hours ago. So that's probably one of the main uh, things that's going on is that southern eye wall is not quite as powerful. And I guess that's pretty typical. Well, let me uh, show you something here. We have some video of uh, some damage that we had here uh, in uh, Bolivia. There was a truck parked in the parking lot over here with a cast aluminum tool shed in the back. A limb, I guess maybe three inches in diameter or something, just pierced through it. Really amazing. I mean, we look around here and we said there's not much damage right here. There aren't a whole lot of trees down, a few. But someone pointed that out and said, you know, this is what's flying through the air when you have hurricane force winds. So it's good to be uh, definitely inside when that is going on. Things are a little bit quieter at this point. So we're feeling uh, pretty good. Again, the rain hasn't really kicked back in yet. Uh, temperatures drop, winds are picking up. So we're definitely seeing the backside of uh, the eye wall of hurricane. Uh, Jill, I want to tell the viewers at home, you're about 17 miles from the coast, but you've already had uh, news from the coast of some serious damage, uh, especially in the Southport area. Tell us about that. That's right. Here at the uh, Emergency Management Center, they have uh, Coast Guard, National Guard, uh, Red Cross officials, and also 911 operators. One of the 911 operators came out and said that they get, got a call from a woman where the roof of her apartment had collapsed. So she was calling from her apartment with a collapsed roof, asking for her help to come out. That was in Southport. They did come out. Apparently, she's doing fine. Uh, but that's some of the more serious damage that we've heard. Otherwise, it's mainly trees down and high water. And of course, until the sun rises tomorrow, you're not really going to be able to completely assess the damage. And most likely the uh, worst storm surge will be up up the coast in uh, New Hanover County and not so much there in Brunswick County since uh, as you get down towards the North Carolina line the winds are blowing offshore pushing the water away from the coast. Sure, that's true. A lot of people here from some of the barrier islands and they're all very anxious to get back on those islands and see how their homes have done through the night. Okay, Jill, uh, sit tight. We'll be back to you. Jill Brown from Bolivia, North Carolina. She was in the eye of Hurricane Fran for about an hour and a half beginning at around 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Now, as you have seen there in the pictures, the wind has returned and the rain, albeit not as strong as the uh, eye wall from the north. Uh, as it came through earlier this evening in Bolivia. We want to get you updated now. We have the latest in from the National Hurricane Center. Hurricane warnings are in effect still from Cape Fear, North Carolina, to the North Carolina-Virginia border, including the uh, sound areas, the Pamelico and Albemarle Sounds. A tropical storm warning is now in effect from the north, north of the uh, state line of North Carolina-Virginia up to Chincoteague, including the Greater Hampton Roads area. All other watches and warnings have been discontinued. So again, the hurricane warnings from Cape Fear, North Carolina, north, to the North Carolina-Virginia border. So anywhere from Cape Fear south, that would be the Myrtle Beach area. Your hurricane warnings have been dropped as of 11 o'clock 
Here's the latest position if you're plotting at home. Fran at 11 o'clock Eastern, 34.5 North and 78.1 West. And there it is as it moves towards the north at 16 miles an hour. And you can see the hurricane spinning around. But look at how broad it is. I mean, we're talking about a huge expanse of moisture. And that, uh, again, is going to be the real weather problem this weekend. We've mentioned Agnes in 72, a terrible, terrible flooding through the Appalachians, up through the Poconos. Uh, the Wyoming Valley comes to mind around the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area. Now, we are not advertising anything like Agnes, but we certainly want you to be advised of what could happen this weekend as far as all the heavy rain coming down. Closer inspection shows you the uh, eye coming on shore, the brighter colors indicating those higher uh, and colder cloud tops and those heavier rain bands. And as uh, we've been seeing uh, throughout this evening, the eye continuing to make its progress off to the north. There it is, just off to the west now, west and uh, northwest of Wilmington, North Carolina. So uh, our, we are seeing the eye now move away from the coast. And because it's beginning to lose its moisture and, and or rather its energy source, it's losing uh, its uh, certainly it's tropical energy so it's going to continue to weaken also the friction associated with the land areas will weaken Fran even more overnight but again even though the winds may drop off still the risk of some serious flooding here's our latest Doppler radar from the coast here's Cape Fear anywhere north you're still under hurricane warning that's because the winds are really howling in as Jim Cantore reported it's up in the sound areas where we've gotten some flooding Look at this tremendous amount of rain here. This is where it's raining at the rate of one to two inches an hour. Back around Myrtle Beach, still some rain bands, but notice the circulation is offshore, and that's what has saved the area around Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And Jeff Morrow has returned. He has been in the depths of the storm at Myrtle Beach, but fortunately, Jeff, some better news for property owners and landowners there tonight. Yeah, here in Horry County, things uh, are a lot better than they could have been, Mike. Uh, uh, just when you think this hurricane is pretty much past this area and it's pretty much downhill from here, uh, we get another big blast of wind come through and uh, shake loose a few things. We had a downspout blow off the side of the building here uh, a little while ago, but really the damage uh, in this part of South Carolina really uh, nothing to compare to what's going on up in southeastern North Carolina from what we understand. Uh, the ocean uh, during the day today has just been amazing to me. When we got here at 6 in the morning, it was almost flat, not quite, maybe a foot to two foot swells. By the time the uh, peak of the hurricane was moving by, it was up to about 18 feet in some of the higher swells. Now it's back down again, I'd say maybe three or four feet. It just has gone up and down during the course of the day. No overwash because as you mentioned, it's been an offshore wind flow. That's been good news and that we've had uh, pretty much uh, all this come in at a time of relatively low tide. So overall, I think we dodged another bullet here as uh, Hurricane Fran missed just off the coast. Well, Jeff, fortunately, Fran is weakening. We just got the updated pressure. Fran now at 965 millibars, so that pressure is up a full nine millibars since the uh, last update from the Hurricane Center. So a good sign for all the residents, uh, certainly around Myrtle Beach, but uh, for their friends and neighbors to the north and northeast, the weather is still very, very serious. That's exactly right, Mike, and we're looking, just as I'm speaking now, we're getting a little bit more wind starting to gust behind me. You can see some of the palm trees, but uh, we think that pretty much it's going to wind down slowly, and uh, again, most folks are pretty grateful uh, that Fran has passed us pretty much on by. And I think like we saw with Bertha, when you were covering Bertha in the Outer Banks by uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, the sun will be back out and uh, people will be back out on the beach. Uh, I would suspect that you're exactly right. Okay, Jeff Morrow from Myrtle, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Thanks for the latest there. And some good news, uh, at least some good news tonight, some good news, Hurricane Fran missing Myrtle Beach and Charleston. We were very concerned yesterday we were going to have a repeat, much like Hugo in 89. Charleston picking up about an inch of rainfall. Myrtle Beach getting still some more rain and wind, but the worst to the north. And speaking of some... Uh, damage reports or at least some uh, flooding we're getting reports now around the sound areas in north carolina uh, we've had uh, water really uh, rising very quickly the trent river bridge is now inaccessible from the new burnside new burnside of north carolina that's up towards the north the winds are still blowing on shore and that's why the water is being piled up from the east towards the west also the queens creek bridge near swansboro is underwater and the beach road in Kill Devil Hills, that's out on the Outer Banks, is closed due to power lines down from an earlier squall. So the winds are still a major problem. Let's go to the hurricane warnings, and then we'll uh, give you some idea of what we can expect. The warnings, as I mentioned now, dropped for South Carolina and Myrtle Beach from, from, from Cape Fear North to the state line and the sound areas. That hurricane warning continues. 
Hurricane force winds still battering the coastal areas, and that wind is an onshore wind, so the water is still being piled up uh, in large quantities in these areas as that wind blows on shore. Now, the other story to the hurricane, that w once the winds drop off, here you're seeing the wind gust, will be the risk not only of flooding, but of tornadoes. The storm surge will be a problem overnight tonight. Fortunately, the storm, the hurricane coming in at low tide, but as the hurricane comes on shore, there's always that risk of tornadoes. This tornado watch up until 11 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, another 12 hours. So watch out around Richmond, Raleigh, Durham. Raleigh, Durham, you had a wind gust last hour to 45 miles an hour and a three hour rainfall total of 1.38. And where you see these pink colors, that's where it's rained over 10 inches. Some areas now have picked up over a foot of rainfall and it's still adding up as Fran moves north. So still the story continues to be the wind and the uh, coastal flooding, the wind damage reports now beginning to come in, but obviously a uh, full account of what happened tonight and what is going on right now. We'll have to wait until first light. We'll continue our coverage live from the Carolina beaches and here from the forecast center in Atlanta. First though, we want to drop back, take a break, check your local forecast for your hometown. So stay with us. much iron in your water? Better call RainSoft. This is your local forecast. Weather information you can plan on. Only on the Weather Channel. The Vacation Store, 1-800-TVS-9-TVS. Book now and save 10%, 20%, 30% more. The Caribbean at 30% off. Now that's hot. Jane has cancer. Oh, no. Oh, it's such a shock. You always think this is going to happen to someone else, and now it's my sister. I want to help her, but... What's the right thing to do? It's so frustrating because I have so many questions and I don't know who to talk to. I just want the very best care for her, but I don't know what to tell her. Tell Jane to call Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Isn't that where your mom was treated? Yes, and what impressed me most is that everybody there understands what people with cancer go through. They listen. The doctors answer your questions and ask for your input, and they involve the patient in deciding which treatments are right. And what kind of treatments? Oh, many kinds of advanced medical treatments, and they also believe in nutrition. You know, I think you're right. I'm going to tell Jane to call Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Find out how we can help. Please call 1-800-297-1333 today. It starts here. And it starts here. And it even starts here. Because it all starts here. At Walmart, home of the EverStart battery. A powerful new battery that you can count on to start when you need it to. And since it's at Walmart, you can also count on a good price. 
Ever start. The name says it all. Know what frustrates me? People use the wrong product to stop water from leaking through their basement walls. They think a water sealer will do the same job as a waterproofer. Water sealers go on thin and only repel water. But dry lock masonry waterproofer goes on thick. It fills the pores in the masonry and expands as it dries to form a tough waterproof barrier. Use it on exterior masonry and concrete swimming pools too. So don't use a water sealer when you need a waterproofer. Use dry lock or latex based dry lock. They're guaranteed to stop water. Look for dry lock products at this dealer near you. Don't fool around with Mother Nature. When it comes to severe weather, be prepared. Call 1-900-WEATHER. No place on earth has better weather. I keep reading about this one mutual fund, so I ask them about it. Oh, our blah blah fund is just as good. But I don't see their blah blah fund on this list. Now what? At Schwab, we don't push funds. We show you performance in our mutual fund select list. Call 1-800-790-7704 and get your copy free. So it's Monday morning, and I decide to move money from one fund to another. I gotta call up one fund, wait for a check, mail the check, wait for it to clear. Now it's next Monday. With mutual fund one source, choose from hundreds of no-load funds and get one statement. Which to choose? Call Schwab for our select list free. They recommend this, then that. Then they recommend I sell the first thing they recommended. <laughs> this was supposed to be easy. Now what do I do? Then I get my statement. Ouch. Get someone on your side. Get the investment firm where no one is on commission. Call 1-800-790-7704 and get our mutual fund select list absolutely free. This is your local forecast. Weather information you can plan on. Only on the Weather Channel. channel. No place on earth has better weather. Alrighty, time now to check on the next five days. Our focus, of course, is going to be all across the nation, but we want to uh, kind of center on what's going to be happening with Fran. That will be a key ingredient in the weather in the east. We'll start you out first. I just wanted to show you here some of the rainfall tallies with Fran so far, and it continues to come down. Wilmington, uh, 4.39 inches. I believe officially it's going to be about uh, 4.4 right now, and temporarily the rain has ended. It will kick in again. Around the Raleigh area, 1.41 so far, and uh, Asheville, North Carolina, picking up over an inch as well. Uh, we do have uh, some Doppler radar estimates I'll show you in a moment right along the coast where uh, perhaps as much as uh, 10 inches has fallen in some spots. Let's take a peek at the radar, and I just wanted to show you this so you can see the westward extension of all that rain, the rain pattern working back into uh, western sections of North Carolina now, kind of concentrated into northeastern South Carolina, and you can bet all this moisture will be heading on up into Virginia as well. Now, one of the problems that we're seeing are the very strong easterly winds working on in through the Pamlico Sound area. Uh, that has been forcing all that water back into the Pamlico River on into the uh, Trent River, some problems around uh, New Bern. So there are definitely some problems as a result of very strong winds pushing the water and uh, add insult to injury, and you end up with a lot of rain coming down, which is just compounding the flooding threat across uh, this part of the nation. So a very, very treacherous situation situation here. Uh, combine the fact that you're getting a lot of heavy rain and very strong winds, a lot of down trees, and in turn, a lot of down power lines. So uh, several factors to come into play. 
Now to focus a little bit more on the heavy rain, because this is the segment where we go into the future a little bit, I'll show you what's been coming on so far. And if you look very, very closely, you'll be able to see some of those pinks indicating up to a foot of rain. And this right here around Brunswick County as we head into extreme southeastern North Carolina. So right along the coast there, a tremendous amount of rain. Now these are Doppler radar estimates, but uh, we have had some uh, pretty impressive uh, rainfall rates at some points coming down a couple of inches an hour. So a tremendous amount of rain coming down. And of course, when you get amounts up to 10 or 12 inches, that's going to be in a very localized area. Moving on then, we'll also find that uh, the rainy travel and all that rain in this region has prompted flood watches. Uh, there are numerous flood warnings across much of North Carolina and wouldn't be surprised to see all that extending northward into Virginia as we head into the morning hours. Any kind of rain we're seeing out to the west is much more scattered, but still the potential for some stronger thunderstorms heading into western North, South Dakota and western sections of Nebraska as we head on into the evening hours. Current map is looking like this, and the big game in town is Fran. Other than that, Fortunately, a fairly quiet night. In the vicinity of this front, we are finding a few showers and storms. Those storms will begin to uh, diminish a bit overnight to perhaps fire up again for tomorrow. Here's what your forecast looks like heading on into tomorrow. And you'll find, the, again, the front extending from uh, the Canada, Canada all the way back down into uh, the Rockies. Showers and thunderstorms there. Perhaps of more significance to you if you live in the east is what's going to happen with Fran. It should be downgraded to a tropical storm heading into Friday morning. Uh, these systems weaken quickly as they move on shore. And still a tropical storm perhaps by midday, but still some wind with this. Uh, you can also plan on a lot of heavy rain and note how the slow movement takes it northward. Uh, that's very important to note. A tropical depression by the afternoon and not much of a steering current to really move this thing on out. Bertha moved very quickly. This one does not look like it's going to be as fast a mover. And we're looking at the potential for significant rains across this region. Right in here, the Appalachian chains, so you get that lift, the mountains lifting the air and squeezing out every little bit of moisture. And we could be talking about significant flooding across this region as we head into Friday. And that rain will continue to spread on northward. Westward extension of it could see some of that rain into the Columbus area, back down through Lexington, and even uh, some moisture working into parts of the deep south, but uh, we're really concerned around North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia. Ah, that area has been saturated with just way, way too much moisture. There's a look at your windy travel as we head through time. Uh, 50 mile per hour winds plus as we head into much of North Carolina. Uh, low overnight lows rather cool in the west, but very tropical in nature as we head on into the east. A 70s for your lows, but not much recovery during the day. The sunshine will have a tough time penetrating all those thick clouds and the rain coming down. By Saturday, maybe some recovery in temperatures, but again, you can follow the heavy rain pattern. That's where you're going to find the 60s for your highs as you head into the east. And we work our way right on into Tuesday. Well, still kind of cool here into the northeast, cooler around the Great Lakes. It remains hot in the desert southwest. Rainy pattern for your Saturday here from the Great Lakes on eastward, including uh, Hartford and New York City and on down toward the Philly area. D.C. will see some rain. By Sunday, still very wet into the northeast. Any vacationers planning a trip to the northeast this weekend uh, plan on some slower travel because of the rain. Rainy travel here into Monday. And even on into Tuesday, maybe things slackening off a bit by early next week. But it is going to be a very wet pattern. Flooding is a certainty in parts of North Carolina on into Virginia. Very heavy rains. And we need to really watch around West Virginia as well. Again, already saturated ground across that region. We're going to talk a little bit more about Fran when we return with Weather Scope coming up. Got something different for your sensitive teeth. Well, you can take it back. My dentist wants me to use Sensodyne. This is Sensodyne. Sensodyne with baking soda. No pain. My mouth feels fresh and clean. Sensodyne with baking soda. All you feel is fresh and clean. Look for a coupon in your Sunday newspaper. Not just snack cake. Snack cake with a new attitude. Because taste is hot. Fat is not. Want a new twist on lemon? Pucker up. Sweet reward. Desserts with an attitude. New from Betty Crocker. Too many bills, not enough money. Every month we're deeper in debt. Which is larger, your ambition or your income? Step up to a career in electronics.
Cleveland Institute of Electronics, CIE, is for men and women with ambition to land high-paying jobs, gain promotions, and make careers. Through CIE's independent study, learn from among the world's most highly regarded electronic specialists. In the U.S. and in 70 nations, more than 100,000 CIE graduates are earning top incomes in electronics. Approved by the Department of Veterans Affairs, CIE is fully accredited and licensed in all 50 states. If you have an intense desire to make it, call toll-free 1-800-467-9177 and receive your free catalog. Secure your future in electronics. That's the last of the bills, and there's money in the bank. Why don't we get away for a long weekend? Fran has made landfall and continues to move over the state of North Carolina. Stay tuned to the Weather Channel for the latest information. They lurk in your house, adrift in every room. Dust, viruses, and allergens. Microparticle airborne invaders rampaging through your house, passing through an ordinary filter again and again. But with a Filtreat filter from 3M, you can take control. A Filtreat filter removes microparticles better than ordinary filters. 35 times better. Defend your airspace with Filtreat filters. One more example of 3M innovation. Natural sport. The walking shoe designed for rock climbers everywhere. Natural sport walking shoes are available at a fine retailer near you. Coming up on a special edition of Weather Scope, the latest on Hurricane Fran right after your local forecast. This is a special edition of WeatherScope, comprehensive coverage of Hurricane Fran from the Weather Channel. Hurricane Fran has made landfall tonight near Cape Fear, North Carolina. It continues to weaken very slowly, but now the damage is being assessed along the beaches of North and South Carolina. Thanks for tuning in to the Weather Channel. I'm Mike Seidel here in the Forecast Center. As we continue our live coverage as Hurricane Fran, a Category 3, has made landfall and devastation already being reported. Let's uh, show you the latest from the National Hurricane Center as of 11 o'clock Eastern Time. And the wind's now down to 100 miles an hour. Now, Fran came in as a Category 3 on the Saffir Simpson scale with sustained winds of 115 miles an hour. Fortunately, Fran did not intensify as it crossed the Gulf Stream waters. It's now moving north at 16 miles an hour, and the pressure has come up dramatically 
a sign that Fran is weakening, and the uh, center of the eye wall is collapsing. 965 millibars. The pressure just several hours before was 956 millibars, so a, a rapid jump of about nine millibars. And now the eye is located 20 miles northwest of Wilmington, North Carolina, continuing to move north at 15, rather 16 miles an hour. Here's a close-up shot of Hurricane Fran, and you can see the eye now is on shore, and it's pretty obvious that the, the rains are still continuing because of all the bright colors. This indicates those higher and colder cloud tops on the infrared picture. Now, those of you on the back side of the uh, hurricane have lucked out very, uh, very fortunately, and we will check in with, at Myrtle Beach with Jeff Morrow in just a minute, but those of you along and to the right of the center in these areas. now. Granted, all the coastal communities have been evacuated, so it's going to be first light before we really have a total, uh, really complete idea of what the damage and devastation has been. But we're still getting wind gusts in Jacksonville to 90 miles an hour. We're getting reports now of sound side flooding into the inland tributaries off the Pamlico and Albemarle Sounds. So a lot certainly is going on. And we have really had really an exciting evening here at the Weather Channel covering Fran because Jill Brown was just in the right spot at the right time in the eye of Hurricane Fran earlier. Jill, now that the, uh, the south eye wall has returned, how is the weather going downhill? Well, it's definitely uh, gotten, a little bit, gotten a little bit windier here, and we can hear the wind blowing through the trees. Uh, the rain hasn't really picked up. I had a chance uh, since the last time I talked to you to go in and watch the Weather Channel a little bit. We're here at the Brunswick County Emergency Management Center, and they do have the Weather Channel on the big screen watching it continuously. And I noticed that on the radar, now I can see that on the backside, the rain is definitely a little bit more sparse. Uh, uh, the eye looks a little ragged. So without doubt, without a doubt, Fran is weaker on the south side of this eye wall than it was when it came in. The winds aren't nearly as strong, and so far we still really haven't had much rain. Uh, that's right, Jill. Based on radar right now, uh, Fayetteville and eventually Raleigh-Durham is going to get really uh, hit hard by those uh, bands that you had earlier. Uh, tell us about uh, what you experienced this evening when you were in the eye wall. Well, as we arrived here uh, about 8 o'clock, uh, 7, 8 o'clock, uh, very windy, very rainy uh, outside, dangerous driving conditions without a doubt. We came in uh, by 9 o'clock, all of a sudden the winds just stopped. You know, we were inside the, the garage here, noticed that the windows aren't rattling on the doors any longer, went outside, birds were flying around, very hot, very humid, down to drizzle, trees standing straight up, no longer blowing over. And surprisingly, we were in the eye for about two hours' time before it really started coming back in. And as mentioned, the winds aren't nearly as strong now on the backside of this hurricane. And what's the latest out of Southport as far as damage down on the coast? Again, we've had a few reports of damage, mainly trees down. We had a report of a collapsed roof on an apartment building. Uh, the woman was rescued from that, appears to be doing okay. Uh, some of the people here have asked me at the information desk to let people know that if you have a home down along the beach and you want information, you're probably going to have to wait until tomorrow because they can't get back out there to assess until Fran is much weaker and much farther away. And they're planning on doing that at first light. So you might want to have to just might just have to hold tight for a little while longer. Uh, excellent advice there. Jill Brown reporting live from Bolivia, North Carolina, southwest of Wilmington in the eye of Hurricane Fran earlier this evening for about an hour and a half to two hours. And now the rain has returned. Fortunately, this time the southern eye wall not nearly as uh, devastating as the northern eye wall was. Hurricane Fran continues to spin on shore. Let's show you the latest radar and the radar indicating where the eye of Fran is located right about in here. And you can see that the southern feeder bands don't have any of those bright colors. So even though you're going to get more rain, especially over around Wrightsville Beach and over towards the uh, Rocky Point area north of Wilmington, the worst amount of rainfall will be certainly off to the north. That's where we have the heavier rainfall is now continuing to rotate up towards Fayetteville and Raleigh-Durham. You've already had an inch and a third of rain in three hours, and winds there have been gusting as high as 45 miles an hour, and you're also under a tornado watch. Hurricane warnings now have been shrunk from Cape Fear North to the North Carolina-Virginia border, including the sounds, the Pamlico and Albemarle sounds. A tornado watch is also in effect until 11 o'clock in the morning. That includes the Richmond area, Virginia Beach, the Norfolk Campton Roads area, the Tidewater area, and also into uh, a good deal of eastern North Carolina. Often it's the case as a hurricane makes landfall in the northeast quadrant, that's where we often have the highest risk of tornadoes. Fortunately, tornadoes or twisters associated with hurricanes tend to be of the F0 or F1 category on the Fujita scale. That's the scale we use to measure uh, the intensity from 0 to 5. And uh, F0, F1 can still do some damage, but certainly a far cry from what we see in Tornado Alley in the springtime. 
And covering the storm from the southern vantage point for the Weather Channel has been Jeff Morrow. He's been uh, hunkered down at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Jeff, uh, a lot of good news tonight from that part of the coastline. Yeah, it isn't all good news, Mike, but compared to what uh, you've been reporting and Jill and um, Jim have been reporting up in southeast North Carolina, it has been relatively uh, uh, a better time of it with uh, Hurricane Fran as it's gone on by. Uh, just when you think Hurricane Fran has pretty much left this area completely, the rain is over with uh, for the most part, and we think the wind has all died down. We get another big blast of wind to come through, uh, probably upwards of uh, 30 or 40 miles an hour, but gradually things have uh, has been calming down as we've headed on through the evening. Earlier we had wind gusts here to 60 and 65 miles an hour. It has done some minor structural damage from what we can uh, ascertain around this area. A couple of the hotels lost uh, a little bit off the sides of their walls, uh, some uh, loose debris flying around. Of course, our rental van had the windows uh, blown out of it, at least two of the back windows from the pressure of the wind. But uh, other than things like that, uh, it's been, uh, as you said, a relatively uh, smooth transition as Fran moved up the coast. Well, Jeff, we know there was a total evacuation east of the uh, Highway 17 bypass, and the Associated Press tonight is estimating that the Myrtle Beach area will lose $7.5 million a day in business and tourism. But as we mentioned earlier, uh, it's very likely that uh, everybody will be back in town uh, tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, we don't know exactly when the uh, evacuation, and actually there's a curfew in effect here, uh, is going to be lifted completely. Uh, that probably will happen tomorrow. Uh, we'll let you uh, guys know exactly when that's being lifted in this part of South Carolina. But uh, hopefully they, they want to get the folks back here as soon as possible. There's really a minimal amount of cleaning up to do, and then they can uh, get back on with uh, usually what is a very busy time of the year here in September. Okay, uh, Jeff, uh, I think uh, by sometime tomorrow midday you'll have that sun back on Myrtle Beach. Jeff Morrow reporting at least some good news from Fran tonight with the wind blowing offshore, not nearly the risk of the uh, coastal or tidal flooding, but still uh, some at least minimal reports of damage from the Myrtle Beach area, and that includes the entire area in Horry County. Let's uh, check the rainfall total now, our Doppler radar estimate, then we'll check in with Jim Cantore at Wrightsville Beach. And this is one of those uh, tools that we've just been able to kind of... Uh, put on the air in the past year or so, and this is uh, the Doppler radar adding up the rainfall. Now, granted, this is an estimate, but you get an idea. This is the scale over here, and I know it's hard to read at home, but let me give you an idea. Anywhere you see an orange color or brighter up towards these pinks, that's where you're getting at least, or you've picked up so far, at least three inches of rain. So anywhere in this area, at least three inches of rain has fallen. But let me show you some of these areas, like right along the coast, in uh, the areas in southern parts of Brunswick County also, as you get up towards the north and northeast Wilm Wilmington in these areas, uh, specifically in Onslow County, over towards, uh, oh gosh, uh, Pender County, it has been raining, uh, as they say, cats and dogs, in anywhere from 10, to a f 10 inches to over 15 inches of rain, up to 15 inches of rain in some areas. But anywhere you see this kind of pink shading, rose-colored area, at least 10 inches of rain, and that is the other story. In fact, uh, tonight we have flash flood warnings continuing until 4 a.m for the uh, following counties, Bladen, Brunswick, Columbus, New Hanover, Pender, and Robeson counties in North Carolina. That flash flood warning continues with more heavy rain coming in. Now, in the area where it's been raining very, very hard and there has been some flooding, our very own Jim Cantori is at Wrightsville Beach. And Jim, uh, a lot prettier picture than what we saw earlier as you reported from that area. And I can see uh, some emergency vehicles there flashing in the background. <laughs> And that's a police car not allowing uh, any cars to head back over 74, Mike, toward the beach, which we are about a mile inland from uh, at this point. We moved in earlier today as uh, Hurricane Fran definitely made its uh, presence uh, very, very felt. And I'll tell you, we've been listening to some of the reports on the radio, and it is not sounding very, very pretty. Uh, Carolina Beach, they're talking about some of the beachfront homes there uh, with houses that have been you know, severely damaged by some of the water. A lot of the beachfront homes and the beach uh, communities have been damaged as well. And they're talking about this being the worst tidal problems and tidal flooding since Hazel, if not worse. So uh, this is definitely going to be something that we're going to see tomorrow once the sun comes up and it's not going to be a pretty picture. I want to show you what we saw. We finally got a chance to get back outside last night or actually early, later on this evening when the winds began to die down just a little bit. We had a, a stiff breeze coming this way and uh, with these winds the boats were tore from their moorings about past me here uh, off toward the east to northeast is a marina and these boats when we first got here where you could see them out there they were about three or four hundred yards out there and we're just kind of saying oh yeah i wonder what's going to happen to these things out there 
and they have made their way to about 100 yards uh, from the hotel. Before we got a chance to see these boats, we saw the lights get, I mean, the, the, the water get increasingly high. We thought we were going to have to deal with a truck that was going to be underwater. We were almost surrounded by water here with the overwash. And in some places we're hearing tonight, uh, especially down toward Route 421, some of that uh, overwash is still 10 feet deep in some places. Now, I think it's going to be a while with those winds still blowing on shore in your area that uh, that, that water starts to uh, kind of uh, move away from the coast and certainly clear out of some of the uh, intercoastal waterway area. Mike, I think it's going to be a lot worse than people think. I really do. Okay, Jim, thanks for the update there from Wrightsville Beach. Jim Gantori, we'll check back with him later on tonight. Joining me now here in the Weather Channel Forecast Center is senior meteorologist uh, Matt Crowther. And uh, certainly Matt has uh, seen many hurricanes and uh, has actually uh, gone out and experienced them in person. And now that we've gotten the hurricane on shore, uh, what we're talking about is a lot of rainfall and the risk of some serious flooding. That's right. Unfortunately, some hurricanes are more well-known for flooding, of course. Agnes and even Camille, which is one of the most devastating hurricanes that Category 5 hit the U.S., caused serious flooding in the Virginia area, and we're really worried that this thing will slow down and cause some very serious flooding in that same area, maybe western Virginia, west Virginia, southern Pennsylvania, maybe in the Washington, D.C. area. We're very concerned with that. Well, if you remember back in 1969, Camille made landfall on the Gulf Coast, and four or five days later, the impact for the uh, Woodstock Music Festival was very apparent with all the heavy rains and the mud there, and Agnes uh, causing uh, devastation in parts of West Virginia and also up through a good deal of uh, Pennsylvania with uh, some spots getting 25, 26 inches of rainfall. Yes, and unfortunately, if this thing slows down a little bit, and the computer models are indicating that, even if it's a depression, it could cause 25-inch totals of rain, and we get what's called upslope rain, which uh, with the mountains are really going to squeeze out that tropical moisture. Let's uh, show the viewers at home the kind of the wider view of the satellite loop, give you uh, an idea of the expanse of the storm. And uh, Matt, uh, tell us a little bit about the track as it moves off to the north. Okay, we just got the newest track from the Hurricane Center, and they're predicting almost a due northward mo movement. And by 72 hours, it's still only supposed to be barely up into the uh, northern Pennsylvania, southern New York area as a tropical depression or a weak low pressure system. But as it moves slower and slower, and the winds come more upslope around the northern edge of the storm, we are expecting locally 10 inches plus. And with those mountain areas, we wouldn't be surprised to see 15 or 20 inches. And there could be some very devastating flooding. And we've already seen uh, flooding locally in eastern North Carolina. Carolina, not even, uh, not even uh, talking about this evening, but yesterday we had some flash flood warnings. But now you can see that heavy rain mat extending into the mountains. And again, you said in three days with the remnants of Fran up in this area, this whole wet area, this whole rainy area will be extended up into New England. Now, we want to show you, this is the weather map from later tomorrow afternoon, later tomorrow afternoon, and this is what's left. This is our tropical low uh, sign, but Matt, look at all the isobars, lines of constant or rather equal barometric pressure, and with all those lines there, that packing just tells us there's still going to be a fair amount of wind, and as you mentioned, the wind blowing in towards the ridge line of the Appalachians. That's right, it's upslope. Just so like we talk about upslope a lot in the Rocky Mountains, you get the same effect, of course, with the Appalachians. And the other bad factor is that a lot of these areas are very saturated. If we had a dry ground situation, it might be a little bit better. So if you get 10 or 15 or 20 inches of rain on top of already saturated ground, there could be some serious flash flooding where it just the water just will pick up in a very short period of time, and maybe even dams bursting, things like that. We hope that doesn't happen, but we really have to watch out for that possibility. Okay, Matt, thanks for the update. Again, flooding the big problem over the weekend. Right now, we're more concerned with uh, the risk of still uh, flooding along the coast. We also have a tornado warning now in Northampton and Western Bertie County, northeastern North Carolina, so a lot of problems continuing in North Carolina tonight. We'll keep uh, you certainly updated, get you through the situation throughout tonight and throughout the weekend in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. We're going to take a break now, check your local forecast, and then we'll come back in about five minutes and update you on another tropical depression in the uh, Atlantic, which could become another tropical storm, so stay with us. These antiperspirants, they're history. Because now there's something that keeps you drier. Sure Ultra Dry. It's a better kind of antiperspirant. A soft solid with just two clicks. It goes on dry to keep you ultra dry. Just watch. An ordinary solid can flake off. But Sure Ultra Dry vanishes in to form an invisible layer of protection that keeps you drier than ever before. Prove it to yourself. Sure Ultra Dry goes on dry, keeps you ultra dry. This is your local forecast. Weather information you can plan on, only on the Weather Channel.
get the best paint money can buy? Where to get it? Where to get it? At Sherwin Williams, where you'll also get thousands of wallpaper patterns with a low price guarantee. Where to get it? Right now, save 25% on Sherwin Williams Super Paint Interior. With a 20 year warranty, it's our best interior wall paint. Where to get it? Where to get it? There's only one paint this good, and only one place to get it. Sherwin Williams. Where to get it? New, the first multimedia CD-ROM from the Weather Channel. Everything weather is the essential guide to the wise and wonders of weather. See tornadoes from every angle. Discover fascinating facts and features about these terrifying twisters. Explore a complete climate database of more than 500 U.S. cities. Go global to look up information for international destinations. Plan each day with a beautiful weather photograph using the Daily Planner. In-depth analysis of hurricanes, winter storms, and thunderstorms. Read and print out 95 articles explaining amazing weather phenomena. View over 250 dramatic weather photographs and see over 40 one-of-a-kind video clips. Connect to a local forecast for over 200 U.S. and international cities. This easy-to-use weather reference CD-ROM is a great gift for the whole family. Now available for Windows, in stores everywhere, or order directly from the Weather Channel for only $39.95. Call 1-800-633-2222. That's 1-800-633-2222. Order now. How would you like to have whiter teeth right now? Right now? That'll be great. Sure, I'd love whiter teeth. Wouldn't everybody? Hi, I'm Erin Gray, and I'm here to tell you about Instant White. Just spray it on, and in less than 10 seconds, you're on your way to whiter teeth and a brighter smile. That's right, it's a spray. Just look at how well it works. You can really see the difference. No more gooey gels, no more goofy mouth trays. With Instant White, you just spray it on, and that's it. It even makes ugly stains disappear. Instant White has been proven both safe and effective. It really works. Call now, and you'll also get this travel size free. That's both sizes for only $19.95. You'll love Instant White, so order now. To order Instant White and receive the travel size absolutely free, call 1-800-936-0200 or send checker money order for $19.95 plus $4.50, shipping and handling to the address below. But for faster service, call 1-800-936-0200. So why did you leave AT&T? I fell for the gimmicks. And I'm disappointed. I miss AT&T. AT&T misses you, too. So we're making it easy to come back. Anything that makes my life easier, I'm for it. How does up to 100 free AT&T minutes sound? I like free minutes. We'll send you AT&T long distance certificates good for up to 100 free minutes. Just for switching back to AT&T. 100 free minutes, I'm there. There's more. Only AT&T customers can get AT&T True Reach Savings. Spend $25 a month and you save 25% to anyone, anytime, anywhere in the U.S. You're covered on every type of call on your AT&T phone bill. What more could you ask for? How about this? AT&T puts your savings in black and white. What have I got to do to come back to you guys? All you have to do is call 1-800-GET-TRUE. And you'll get up to 100 free AT&T minutes. So, what do you think? I think we'll switch. Good decision. <laughs> Thank you. You know what to do. That's your true choice, AT&T. The Weather Channel offers many fascinating products you can order right over the phone. To receive your free catalog, call 1-800-250-5979 today. When I first started working out with the Nordic Track, I, I lost a lot of weight in a very short period of time. I went from 226 to 172 in just a few months. The combination of the Nordic Track exercise along with a low-fat diet has really helped me trim my waistline and my weight. I look good. I feel good. I've gone down two dress sizes. I feel sensational. Call for a free video and brochure to find out what a Nordic Track workout can do for you. You want me to talk about my experience with Nordic Track? I had become a couch potato. We all know what they are. Ended up talking to my doctor who said I had to do two things watch my diet and exercise regularly. So as a result of getting on the Nordic track, I brought my weight down considerably. I lost 12 pounds. Now I want you to go right out and buy one. <laughs> Call now to get a free video and brochure that tell how you can achieve your fitness goals with Nordic track. Call right now without cost or obligation. Coming up on a special edition of WeatherScope, the latest on Hurricane Fran, right after your local forecast.
place on earth has better weather. Forecasts from the Weather Channel are also available from the following. This tropical update is sponsored by FEMA. Well, let's get right to it. We have a very short time because of uh, the time crunch going on here at the Weather Channel. Here's the latest on Fran. You'll get another look at this at the top of the hour. Winds are down to 100 miles per hour, and the winds will continue to decrease. Let's show you what's going on up above with the clouds and them going into motion. The eye has certainly made it inland, heading up into central North Carolina. We're going to see uh, still some powerful winds here. Raleigh, Durham, you're going to see some strong winds, the Greenville area, as we move on through the night. They'll get weaker and weaker, though, as we go through the night as well. Let's go in close and show you what's going on. Wind gusts are still being reported here at Wilmington, where we had close to 100 mile per hour winds, 53 miles per hour, latest wind gust. And you can see 40, 50, occasionally up to 70 or 80 in some areas. And we have had the possibility of tornadoes for the last several hours, and it'll continue right through tomorrow here for much of North Carolina, at least the eastern part of North Carolina. And here's why. As our system comes in, these bands, this yellow area, certainly is part of the one of the stronger bands, which could produce some gusty winds and also could spawn some tornadoes. So watch out. Moving on through Raleigh-Durham right now so much rain you can barely read the city in here i can't even read it but there's definitely going to be some problems with the heavy rain locally 10 inches or more we're talking about some flood problems flood watches are in effect up and down the mid-atlantic area and that's going to be a problem now elsewhere in the tropics we have something else going on a tropical depression has formed right here here are the islands the leeward islands and tropical depression number eight is our next concern this could become a tropical storm as early as tomorrow. We'll keep you abreast of that and have the latest on Fran coming up. Maybe you've never been in an accident, but I bet you've got airbags. And maybe your house has never burned down, but I bet you've got smoke detectors. If you're prepared for everything. I bet you don't have flood insurance. The truth is homeowners insurance doesn't cover flood damage. Now flood insurance is easy to get from the National Flood Insurance Program. So call your insurance company agent or this number. Because with floods, you can never say never. The National Flood Insurance Program. We can't replace your memories, but we can help you build new ones. Sleek. Practical. Beautiful. The contour concept. Found only on Frigidaire Gallery refrigerators. Convenient features like a flip-up shelf. And a new built-in water filter for better tasting ice and water. Practical, beautiful, frigid air. Call frigid air and discover the look of better performance. Fran has made landfall and continues to move over the state of North Carolina. Stay tuned to the Weather Channel for the latest information.